main character in Where the Boys Are is a young woman who's 18. She turns 19 while she's in Florida. And she's from a small town in Michigan. Uh, and um, so there's that, she, she has that small town mentality, that small town background, but uh, some roots in the small town that are very, very strong. Uh, goes, comes to MSU, well, MSC at the time, and what, what we don't see carried over into the film is the psychology of that generation, the social psychology of, of her generation, a generation that we can easily extend into the 19, 1960s. So such things as the, the Cold War, the, the developing Cold War with the Russians and uh, intercontinental ballistic missiles uh, and uh, bombs, nuclear bomb testing, uh, the draft. So the whole psychology of her generation, that kind of uneasiness they had, a, a carefreeness but also an uneasiness about the world that was developing around them, uh, a world which increasingly had a lot of tensions to it and that in fact these forces were going to pl play out in their lives and were going to shape and determine their lives in, in very important ways. So a lot of the things that, that we see carried into the 60s are really coming out in the late 1950s, the novelist said in, in 1958. 50, uh, and these are the things that, uh, they're, while they're not preoccupied with them, they don't become major point of, of their lives. It's very much in the background. I think one thing that Glendon, in fact he said this in the interview with Larry King, that what he was trying to do and where the boys are was to uh, create a portrait of a generation of students. Where the Boys Are was one of those few stories, one of the few novels that really helped to create a kind of mythological lexicon about uh, spring break that uh, uh, influenced uh, as the novel was translated in the film and the film altered the novel but nonetheless created a several new types of formulas that then became extremely popular um, and found a kind of genre in Hollywood filmmaking, the, the beach film, um, that in, in a sense continues today in reality television uh, with the MTV spring break shows in terms of, of the, the behavior of, of uh, college students on, on spring break. Not many novels do that. Uh, I mean, you, you, there, there are not many novels that, that can create or identify a culture, um, novel into film, can create and identify a culture that has had uh, such an important impact uh, in terms of people's perception, both in terms of college, college students' perception as well as older generation parents' perception of what happens in spring break. Uh, and this is one of them. This is one of them. Well, I, I hope that... Uh, they would uh, understand that you know there are two where the boys are. Uh, there's the novel, uh, Glendon's novel, which uh, I, I think deserves to be more widely read and understood as a as a major literary product of its times. It's it's one of the best college novels ever written. It's funny. It's witty. It's inventive. Uh, where the boys are, the film, is a commercial product. Uh, and you know it generalizes the story, uh, and it loses. It, it isn't a uh, Michigan Michigan State story per se, uh, and so the identification, which locally should really be with the novel and not necess not necessarily with the uh, with the film. Uh, Glendon really didn't have anything to do with the film. It was written by a veteran, experienced screenplay writer. Um, what, what he's created is, is uh, as so few novels have created in the 20th century, is a, is a mythology that's long-standing um, and very powerful and still exists today. And you go to many universities across the country, the concept of spring break, uh, there, there's, there's kind of a connection. Uh, to, to where the boys are, uh, probably a little bit more to the film, uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it's he's created something that not many writers have created, and that is a kind of reality construction that's still with us today. I think if uh, I'd recommend why people should read this book and know about this book again is 
it did it set a trend that's still going today. I certainly followed that trend in the mid '60s several times. Uh, I went to Lauderdale once, but I also went to some of the other places that were helped created by this this whole atmosphere that he wrote about. Um, things like he wrote about in that book certainly happened, and probably everyone's spring break. Um, I think that makes a little some people unsettled, especially parents. And that's one of the things the young girl said in the book. Boy, I'm glad this book wasn't out before I went on spring break. I'd have never been able to go. <laughs> if you want to understand Michigan State, you want to understand students at Michigan State in the late 1950s, and if you want to understand students in the in the late 1950s, college students in the 1950s, that whole social psychology, that whole social mentality, read the novel. If you, want to, if you want to see what Hollywood did with the novel and how they necessarily changed it to make a successful commercial product, then there's the film. 1972, he did what R.S. Hemingway had done in 1961. That is, he shot himself. But uh, I think Glendon still has a place here. And I think he'll always have a place here, especially with the with where the boys are, which was really marking a transitional period in undergraduate life, because uh, prior to that, the, the uh, migration toward the beaches really hadn't begun until about the time that he wrote uh, Where the Boys Are. And of course, it's very much in that respect a, a memoir of MSU as far as Glennon is concerned. But uh, I think Glennon was important in a lot of ways and will continue to be important in the history of MSU in a way that, uh, well, Lots of others of us are not. Where the boys are, where the boys are.